Okay. Says preparing to stream live. We don't believe it. We don't trust it. Setting up meeting for Facebook Live. Still don't believe it. Still don't trust it. Never have. Never will. All right. We appear to actually be live. Hello and welcome to Teen New Book Tuesday. I'm Lisa. I will be your librarian today. Okay. Today is a very special episode of Teen New Book Tuesday because do we know why? Do we think why? You think we know why? Because it, this week is the one year anniversary of Tea and New Book Tuesday. So in addition to telling you all about the yellow labels, which are mystery thrillers and suspense coming out in September, already pre-ordered and ready for you to put a hold on in the Mobile Public Library catalog, I am going to give away 11 gift sets. I've made them. Wait, wait, let me start. I'm, I've been waiting to show you this for a while. Okay. So we 3D printed these. They're little tea caddies. You can put, oh, I don't need to show you the, with the hand motion because I have one that's already prepared. This is what you win. Okay, I meant this to be neater and cuter, but I already had some Tazo I wanted to give you. So when our event person went to Walmart, uh, we picked out some cute celestial seasonings flavors. I completely forgot that celestial seasonings doesn't do it in these little, uh, paper packets that have the name on them. They're loose, unmarked, unbleached paper. So, so basically I had to break them down and put them in little Ziploc bags with what they are so that you would know what random celestial seasonings flavor that is. But everyone gets, I think at least five or six flavors, different kinds of tea. I also have some MPL swag that I'm gonna throw in there for you. Um, and if you would like one of these, I had not picked out anything in advance, unfortunately, I should have. But again, I have 11 of them. I wanna give them all away, every last one. So in the comments, say, I would like some tea and your MPL location for pickup. And I will send it to that location and you can pick it up at your leisure. Uh, so, that goes to the first 11 people that ask for it. And I have yet to give away 11 books, by the way. So that's more than enough for every, even if you're watching this later and you'd like some tea, absolutely put it on there. It never hurts. So now we can move on to the four giveaway books. And this whole beginning of, beginning of anniversary Teen New Book Tuesday is gonna be about giving stuff away. Oh, and today I'm having my lemon strawberry green tea, which I put a little too much sugar in, but it's delicious nonetheless. Okay, so I have four books to give away. If you would like one of these, you're gonna put the title and your MPL location for pickup. If you've put, if you want tea and this, that's totally fine. Put in, I want some tea and I want this book and here's where I'll pick it up. So. Let's begin with the first of the four. Most of these are like thrillers. This is incredibly hard to read because it's this like neat shimmery. Ooh, look at that. There we go. This is called Lady Joker. It's written by um, Keiru Takamura. It's translated from the Japanese. And the description is a novel that portrays with devastating immensity how those on the fringes of society can be consumed by the darkness of their own hearts. I assume this to mean Joker as in Batman, but as a woman, I might be wrong. Okay, let's read the description because I, I may not know what I'm talking about. Tokyo, 1995, five men at a racetrack every Sunday. Five men meet at a racetrack every Sunday to bet on horses. They have little in common except a deep disaffection with their lives but together they re represent the social struggles and griefs of post-war Japan. A poorly socialized genius stuck working as a welder, a demoted detective with a chip on his shoulder, a Zayanchi Korean banker sick of being ostracized for his race, a struggling single dad of a teenage girl with Down syndrome. The fifth man brings them all together in an elderly drugstore owner, grieving his grandson who has died suspiciously after the revelation of a family connection with a segregated Baraku community, historically subjugated to severe discrimination. 
Intent on revenge against a society that values corporate behemoths more than human life, the five conspirators decide to carry out a heist, kidnap the CEO of Japan's largest beer conglomerate, and extract blood money from the company's corporate financers. Okay. Now I remember why I was so interested in this one. Inspired by the unsolved true crime kidnapping case perpetrated by the monster with 21 faces, Lady Joker has become a cultural touchstone since its 1997 publication, acknowledged as the magnum opus by one of Japan's literary masters, twice adapted for film and television, and often taught in high school and college classrooms. So this is probably really interesting. And The Man with 21 Faces is a, a true story that is absolutely fascinating. Uh, this group kidnapped the CEO of one of the candy companies in Japan. He was able to get away unharmed. The same group then threatened to poison the candy in stores and they found, the authorities went through where they said the poisonings were gonna happen and found bags of candy that had been marked poisoned by some unknown person, but presumably by the group, the man with 21 faces. No one was hurt in that one either, uh, but there was a series of events like that where they just slightly terrorized the population and more, they seem to be targeting, trying to humiliate the police. So there's a lot of theories of who did it, um, but it happened decades ago and they've never, they've never known for sure who it was. And they never nailed down a cl really clear suspect. But they, and it went on for like two years. It was, it, that's a fascinating story. If this is apparently a Japanese classic, I'm betting it's really interesting. But that's Lady Joker. If you're interested in that one, that's hard. it's going to be hard for you to tell because it's hard to see the cover unless you're in person. But moving on, we also have White Ivy by Susan Yang. Ivy Lin, a Chinese immigrant, grows up in a low-income apartment complex in Massachusetts, desperate to assimilate with her American peers. She develops a crush on the golden boy Gideon Spire, a senator's son whose, whose patrician family seems to Ivy the epitome of the American ideal. In the Lynn household, beatings and disapprovals are the norm, but Ivy has a me mentor in her grandmother, Mai Feng, who teaches Ivy how to get the things she covets, if not needs. Ivy develops a taste for winning and for wealth. Years later, when she bumps into Gideon's sister, Ivy thinks it's destiny. She was meant to be part of the Speyer family. But just as she begins to date Gideon, another man from Ivy's past appears, a man with his own set of rules. Ivy soon has a foot in two vastly different worlds and has to make a choice or lose everything she's worked for. A coming of age story, a love triangle, an exploration of class and race and identity. White Ivy is a page turner that will appeal to readers of The Luckiest Girl Alive and Reconstructing Amelia. Ivy Lynn is a truly compelling anti-heroine for whom you will root, maybe in spite of yourself. So that's White Ivy. We've got two more. This one came out in July, and I have one that isn't out yet. I have one that's coming out in September. In keeping with today's themes, both of these are thrillers. Okay. Hollow's Edge used to be a quiet place, a private and idyllic neighborhood where neighbors dropped in on one another, celebrating graduation and holiday parties together, and looked out for one another. But then came the murder of Brandon and Fiona Truitt. A year and a half later, the town is simmering. The residents are trapped, unable to sell their homes, confronted daily by the empty Truitt house, and suffocated by their trial testimonies that implicated one of their own, Ruby Fletcher. And now Ruby's back. With her conviction overturned, Ruby waltzes right back into Hollow's Edge and into the home she once shared with her friend, Harper Nash. Harper, five, year, five years older, has always treated Ruby like a wayward younger sister, but now Harper's terrified. What possible good could come from Ruby's return to the scene of the crime? And yet how can she possibly turn her away when she knows Ruby has nowhere to go? Within days, suspicion spreads like a virus across the town. 
it's increasingly clear that everyone, that not everyone was honest about the night of the Truett murders. And when Harper begins receiving threatening notes, she realized she has to uncover the truth before someone else becomes the killer's next victim. Pole setting with suspense and the shocking twists that are Megan Miranda's trademark, Such a Quiet Place is her best novel yet. A twist, a twisty locked box thriller that will keep you turning pages late into the night. So that's Such a Quiet Place. I think we talked about this one when we talked about July because I recognize the description by Megan Miranda. But Miranda is a very popular author uh, and writes mainly mystery. So this is deep in her wheelhouse of what she does well. One last book. This one comes out September 7th. The Inheritance of Orcadia Divina, I think. The author's name is Zoraida Cordova. So this is an advanced reader copy. They're all advanced reader copies, except this one is actually going to be in your hands in advance of the publication. It's about the Montoyas. The Montoyas are used to a life without explanations. They know better than to ask why the pantry never seems to run low or empty, or why their matriarch won't leave their home in Four Rivers, even for graduations, weddings, or baptisms. But when Orcadia Divina invites them to her funeral and to collect their inheritance, they hope to learn the secrets that she has held on to so tightly their whole lives. Instead, Orcadia is transformed leaving them with more questions than answers. Seven years later, her gifts are manifested in different ways for Marimar, Ray, Tientelli, and her daughter, Rihanna, granting them unexpected blessings. But soon a, fig a hidden figure begins to tear through their family tree, picking them off one by one as it seeks to destroy Orcadia's line. Determined to save what's left of their family and uncover the truth behind their inheritance, the four descendants traveled to Ecuador, to a place where Arcadia buried her secrets and broken promises and never looked back. Alternating between Arcadia's past and her descendants' present, The Inheritance of Arcadia Divina is an enchanting novel about what we knowingly and unknowingly inherit from our ancestors, the ties that bind and reclaiming your power. Okay. So the four books you have to choose from for today's giveaway are Lady Joker, White Ivy, Such a Quiet Place, and The Inheritance of Orcadia Divinia. If you want any of those, put the name in the comments below with your MPL location for pickup. And I do still have several of the ones that I talked about last week. I'm gonna go ahead and put them downstairs on a cart with the word just like free <laughs> on them uh, so that anybody who wants to come and pick them up can pick them up. Um, so yeah, if you're near Maine and you want to swing by and look more closely at any of these titles, they'll be downstairs. All right, we've got our giveaway sorted out. I've got stuff to give away, but now let's talk about what has been pre-ordered for September for MPO. Yeah. Okay. Let's get this over here. Let's hit present. Let's present standard. And we are ready to go. Your September books for Tea and New Book Tuesday. Discussing the September hits. No. Oh, <laughs> I did not update the slide. It's yellow labels today. So mysteries, thrillers, and suspense. Beginning with These Toxic Things, a thriller by Rachel Howazel Hall. Okay. A dead woman's cherished trinkets become pieces to a terrifying puzzle. Mickey Lambert creates digital scrapbooks for clients, ensuring that precious souvenirs aren't forgotten or lost. When her latest client, Nadia Denham, a curio shop owner, new go back. There we go. A curio shop owner dies of an apparent suicide. Mickey honors the old woman's last wish and begins curating her particular objet d'art. A music box, a hair clip, a keychain, 12 mementos in all. They must have meant so much to Nadia, 
who collected them on her flea market scavenges across the country. But these tokens mean a lot to someone else too. Mickey has been receiving threatening messages to leave Nadia's past alone. It's become a mystery Mickey is driven to solve. Who once owned these odd treasures? How did Nadia really come to possess them? Discovering the truth means crossing paths with a long dormant serial killer and navigating the secrets of a sinister pass. One that might, Mickey fears, be ines inescapably intertwined with her own. This got a starred review from Booklist Magazine. If you are interested in these toxic things, it comes out September 1st. All right. The big date in September is, I think, the 7th. That's where, when a lot of things are coming out. But we are moving on to The House of Ashes by Stuart Neville, which, of course, is coming out September 7th. Okay. This is for fans of Gillian Flynn, Tara Finch. It's considered a, a chilling story of Northern Irish murder 60 years buried. Sarah Keane's husband, Damien, has uprooted them from England and moved them to his native Northern Ireland for a fresh start in the wake of her nervous breakdown. Sarah, who knows no one in Northern Ireland, is jobless, carless, friendless, all but a prisoner in her own house. Don't know why her husband thought that this was a, going to be a good healing place for her mental health because all of those things sound like detriments to your mental health. But moving on. When a blood-soaked old woman beats on the door, insisting the house is hers before being bundled back to a, a care facility, Sarah begins to understand the house has a terrible history her husband never intended her to discover. Through the counterpoint voices of two women, one modern English woman, one Northern Irish farm girl speaking from half a century earlier, Stuart Neville offers a chilling and gorgeous portrait of violence and resistance in this truly haunting narrative. This got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. If you're interested in The House of Ashes, it comes out on September 7th. All right. This is a fun period mystery, Scandal in Babylon by Barbara Hambly. Okay. It's 1924. After six months in Hollywood, young British widow Emma Blackstone has come to love her new employer, glamorous movie star Kitty Flint, even if her late husband's sister is one of the worst actresses she's ever seen. Looking after Kitty and her three adorable Pekingese dogs isn't work Emma dreamed of, but Kitty rescued her when she was all alone in the world. Now the worst thing academically minded Emma has to worry about is the shocking historical inaccuracies of the films Kitty stars in. Until that is, Rex Festral, Kitty's first husband to whom she may or may not still be married, turns up dead in her dressing room, a threatening letter seemingly from Kitty in his pocket. Emma's certain her flighty but kind-hearted sister-in-law has been framed. But who by and why? From spiteful rivals to jealous boyfriends, the suspects are numerous. But as Emma investigates, she begins to untangle a deadly plot. And there's something Kitty's not telling her. This gripping first in a brand new series from New York Times bestselling author Barbara Hambly brings the, the sights and sounds of Hollywood to life and is a perfect pick for fans of female front end historical mysteries set in the Roaring Twenties. If you're interested in Scandal in Babylon, it comes out September 7th. All right. The Yards by A.F. Carter. Git O'Rourke is from the wrong side of the tracks. Even if in the depressed Rust Belt town of Baxter, it's not always clear where that designation begins. A single mother, she works hard to support her daughter, Carly, Charlie, sorry, but still finds time to cut loose every once in a while to go to a local bar, drink martinis, and find a companion for the night, which is exactly how she ends up in a hotel room with a strange man passed out on heroin, and how she comes to possess the bag of money and guns that he left open as he got his fix. When the dead body is discovered at the Skyview Motor Court, a bullet through its forehead, Officer Delia Moriala is one of the first on the scene, 
She recognizes the victim as the perpetrator in an earlier crime, a domestic violence call. But that does little to explain how he ended up in the situation in which they find him. She knows he's connected to the local mob, but the crime scene doesn't exactly resemble their typical hit. Instead, all signs point to a pickup gone wrong, which means all signs point to get. A twisted tale set in a tough town, The Yards is a multiple voice mystery with two unforgettable women at its core. It's suspenseful, thrilling, an unpredictable plot will keep the reader guessing until the very last page. So that sounds like a bit noir, but set in the Rust Belt, which should be interesting. If you're interested in the yards, it comes out September 7th. All right. Rock, Paper, Scissors by New York Times bestselling author Alice Feenley. Think you know the person you married? Think again. Things have been wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Wright, spelled with a W, Wright, uh, for a long time. When Adam and Amelia went a weekend away in Scotland, it might be just what their marriage needs. Self-confessed workaholic and screenwriter Adam Wright has lived with face blindness his whole life. He can't recognize friends or family or even his own wife. Every anniversary, the couple exchanged traditional gifts, paper, cotton, pottery, tin, and each year, Adam's wife writes him a letter that she never lets him read. Until now. They both know this weekend will make or break their marriage, but they didn't randomly win this trip. One of them is lying, and someone doesn't want them to live happily ever after. Ten years of marriage, ten years of secrets, and an anniversary they will never forget. Rock, Paper, Scissors is the latest exciting domestic thriller from the queen of the killer twist, New York Times bestselling author, Alice Feenley. If you're interested in Rock, Paper, Scissors, it comes out September 7th. All right, let me get a little green tea. <clears throat> and then we will discuss Over the Falls by Rebecca Hodge. It's early June in the mountains of Eastern Tennessee and the idyllic beauty of the landscape belies the darkness that lurks beneath the surface. Bryn Collins has been living in isolation for 14 years after her fiance, Sawyer, jilted her for her despised sister, Dell. Although a life-threatening accident ended her days navigating the perils of whitewater, she still finds refuge kayaking in the local lakes. But Bryn's placid life hits the skids when an unwelcome cast of characters re-enters her life. Dell goes mysteriously missing, and her 14-year-old son, Josh, arrives to ask for Bryn's help finding her. Her father, Sawyer, has been killed in a plane crash and has no one else to turn to. Carl, an unruly punk the sisters knew years before, is desperate to find Dell because she owes him money. Bryn and Josh follow an ever-elusive trail to Colorado, and at the annual Mountain Games competition in Vail, they finally confront the truth. For Bryn, all, all roads lead to the river, and on vicious Colorado whitewaters, she must muster every ounce of courage and strength to save what she loves most in the world. This is for fans of The River at Night. Rebecca Hodge's new thriller, Thrilling Read, explores how far one woman, one woman will go to find her sister. If you're interested in Over the Falls, it comes out September 7th. All right. Her Perfect Life by Hank Philippi Ryan. Everyone knows Lily Atwood, and that may be her biggest problem. The beloved television reporter has it all. Fame, fortune, Emmys, an adorable seven-year-old daughter, and the hashtag her loving fans created. Hashtag Perfect Lily. To keep it, all she has to do is protect one life-changing secret. Her own. Lily has an anonymous source who feeds her story tips, but suddenly the source begins telling Lee, telling Lily inside information about her own life. How does he or she know the truth? Lily understands that no one reveals a secret unless they have a reason. Now she's terrified someone is determined to destroy her world, and with it, everyone and everything she holds dear. How much will she risk to keep her perfect life? This already got a starred review from Publishers Weekly and Kirkus. 
If you are interested in Her Perfect Life, it comes out September 14th. All right. We're getting towards the end here. But next up is Dark Things I Adore by Katie Latari. 1988. A group of outcasts gather at a small prestigious art camp nestled in the main woods. They're the painters, bright, hopeful, and teeming with potential. But secrets and dark ambitions rise like smoke from a fire, and the truths they will and the truths they will tell will come out to haunt them in more ways, in ways more deadly than they dreamed. 2018. Esteemed art professor Max Durand arrives at his protege's remote home to view her graduate thesis collection. He knows Adora is beautiful and brilliant, and he knows being invited into her private world is a rare gift, but he doesn't know that Audra has engineered every aspect of their weekend together, every detail, every conversation. Audra has woven the perfect web. Only Audra knows what happened that summer in 1988. Max's secrets and the dark things that followed. And even though it won't be easy, Audra knows someone must pay. A searing thriller of trauma, dark academia, complicity, and revenge, Dark Things I Adore unravels the realities behind campfire legends, the horrors that happen in the dark, the girls who become cautionary tales, and the guilty who go unpunished until now. This is the author's first novel, but it has already got a starred review in both Publishers Weekly and Library Journal. If you're interested in dark things I adore, it comes out September 14th. All right. When Ghosts Come Home by Wiley Cash. Let me get a drink of my tea. I think this is our final book for the day. Yeah. Yeah. It is. So, when the roar of a low-flying plane awakens him in the middle of the night, Sheriff Winston Barnes knows something strange is happening at the nearby airfield on the coast of North Carolina. But nothing can prepare him for what he finds. A large airplane has crash-landed and is now sitting sideways on the runway, and there is no sign of a pilot or cargo. When the body of a local man is discovered, shot dead and lying on the grass near the crash site, Winston begins a murder investigation that will change the course of his life and the fate of the community that he has sworn to protect. Everyone is a suspect, including the dead man. As rumors and accusations fly, long simmering racial tensions explode overnight, and Winston, whose own tragic past has followed him like a ghost, must do his duty while facing the painful repercussions of old decisions. Winston also knows that his days as sheriff may be numbered. He's up for re-election against a corrupt and well-connected challenger, and his deputies are choosing sides. As if these events weren't troubling enough, he must finally confront his daughter Colleen, who has come home grieving a shattering loss she cannot fully articulate. As the suspense builds and this contemporary mystery unfolds, Wiley Cash delves deep into the hearts of these richly drawn, achingly sympathetic characters to reveal the nobility of an ordinary man struggling amidst terrifying, extraordinary circumstances. We are buying this both as a book and as an audiobook. If you're interested in when the ghosts come home, it comes out September 21st. All right, that is all for today. But don't forget, if you want to sign up for the newsletter that includes every one of these books, and that's not correct. It's not yet yellow labels next week. I need to fix that slide too. Um, I have the link to that newsletter in the description below. I will be putting a discussion board post on Goodreads for our Good Teen New Book Tuesday group that will go over some of the titles I eliminated. There's a lot of them because, oh my God, the amount of mystery that gets published is slightly ridiculous. Um, so I, as always, eliminated a lot of things that have, it's like book four in a series or something like that. So if you're wondering about any of those, you might want to check out the Goodreads post. And it includes, I think, some pretty big names. Um, although I can't see any of them at the moment. Also, uh, don't forget 
to sign up for a giveaway because everybody can get something today. The four books that I read before are available also if you want the tea caddy and the MPL swag. Say, I want some tea. Either way, put your MPL location for pickup. Next week, I will be back with September Romance in Historical Fiction. And I will see you then. Bye, guys.